morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Wardall. I am a uh, cloud solution architect from Microsoft Corporation. Um, I work in the, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got a place to clip this, all right? Um, I work in the uh, health and life sciences industry vertical at Microsoft. Microsoft's made a huge commitment to um, being a big supporter and platform provider for the uh, health and life sciences division. And uh, so I wanted to bring uh, together something we have done with some partners and provided uh, as open source for folks to mess around with. And this is actually using the Fire integration spec uh, to produce a bot, a conversational bot that leverages our artificial intelligence platform and cognitive services uh, to make it easy. And uh, I know you've been to several websites where you get bots that show up and do various things you ask them to do. And so we said the same thing. We also back this thing by Fire. So when, we, when a patient wants to know something about a concept that's going on in his health or they want to chart something, that all does it through the Fire in the back end. So what Firebot is, is a, uh, it's cloud-based uh, conversational chatbot uh, to interact with any Fire compliant uh, server. And uh, it updates, obtains, or obtains medical record data and natural conversation and commands. Um, it's comprised of some uh, network of services we have um, running on Azure. Um, glad to see other folks were seeing how Azure is a first class citizen for Fire. Uh, we have an SDU3 compliant Fire server that's hosted and backed again by Azure Cosmos DB. And I know I've had a presentation before me talking about this. This is our document database and our graph API database, NoSQL, highly uh, scalable. Uh, geo replicated across the world if you would like that uh, and uh, it gives you a great uh, platform to build fire on um, uh, as well. Um, it uses our cognitive services platform which is again our AI play that's going in and one of it is our bot framework which is a framework that allows you to, to code conversational chat bots like this um, and also provide secure channels to deliver those. So you code once and the channels just get plugged in. So in this case, there's an embedded web channel. Uh, you can have Skype, Skype for Business, uh, Twilio, uh, uh, Facebook Messenger. All those things are available as channels. And basically, you code once the code in the bot framework, and then it can deliver, deliver that uh, code in any of those channels by simply configuring it. Um, and again, depending upon your situation, uh, depending on you know, if you're using PHI or not, how you deliver that model and what pieces of the resources you expose is kind of up to you. Um, we also have a, a secure Skype and Skype for Business web channel, which I can't demo here. Uh, got, it, oops, got it on my phone if you want to see it. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you the secure embedded web channel. And uh, there's a monitor. I wrote a quick uh, monitor web application so you can see things are actually updating to the Fire server as we proceed across. And this is our Art of the Possible solution. Uh, this is uh, provided freely. Uh, there's a GitHub um, I, that we can send out. If you email me, I'd be happy to point you to it. We have a whole Fire on Azure website that has links to that as well. Uh, and you can download the source code and have at it uh, if you'd like to have it as well. Um, so this is what we're going to show. I'm going to show the pieces that's kind of shaded up there. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is show our platform and using the, uh, our interoperability from end to end. So if you start with the left, you know, we have the ways of getting ingesting data right now, and that could be uh, through an IoT device, such as a pulse ox monitor uh, that's in here. We have the fire from the EHRs that are available on-prem or acute care systems or ambulatory. Um, we have people, uh, again, through the websites. Uh, we have an admin user that can actually check on fire, post fire, and do stuff. Mobile, maybe, might be a channel you deliver that the patient itself would deliver to. And what this is supposed to show is, you know, ingesting that data, going to a fire server, using our services, whether they're cognitive or not, landing it in uh, Azure Cosmos DB, and then using our uh, orchestration levels to actually store version history, and also land it in our data lake store as, as structured fire resources. That gives you the ability to run analytics, uh, do visualization on it. Uh, can't show all that, but we have some, this is actually a care continuum app where it actually does analytics on the fire resources and would feed that into our CRM application which could follow up with the patient. So if you have a post-acute care uh, problem and the patient is charting with Firebot that his uh, blood glucose is elevated or, or uh, blood pressure, he might be in imminent danger and needs to go to the hospital, we can send notifications to the mobile app or a, or a triage center that can call them and say, hey, we noticed your blood pressure is getting high over time and, and go on there. So this is the full demo. I'm gonna, again, I'm just concentrating on that little yellow shaded area as we go through it. So uh, 
without further ado. <laughs> so this is the uh, data monitor. I'll show this first. And on the side, this is actually making fire calls to the server to display the patients and the resources that we're interested in on the left. Uh, and uh, then again, some observation data in the middle. This is again, very simple. Just kind of showing you, just to show you there's nothing up my sleeve when I'm actually doing this. Um, <coughs> so uh, here is just some of the data that's on this uh, uh, William Jones, who's who we're gonna pick. This is actually the chatbot UI. This is very similar to you know the chatbots you've seen out there that can embed inside. This is securely embedded inside of a website. You can do it for well as well. So in order to start the conversation, I'm just gonna tell the bot hello, and this telling me welcome and um, this is a security thing. We've actually generated pin codes. So the idea is a patient gets discharged from a acute facility or a, he's seeing an ambulatory facility. You would assign them some sort of sign up for our portal. Here's your pin code to access your data. And again, this, uh, you might want to put some more identifying data behind it, like you know your birth or gender or street address or something like that. But just for simplicity, we just do a pin code. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the pin I have. And actually that pin code was appended as a identifier in the, in the identifier collection of the patient uh, resource. Uh, so we can look it up really quickly. And then again, like I said, you could add more if you want to. So, it's, so the bot service has hit the fire server and said, looked you up and said, hey, what's going on? Please tell me about your health. This is again, conversational. So uh, let's say you had a lab result done and you're just wondering what, what was that lab result like? What was my A1C, for example? And uh, you, could type, you could type that query in and he'll go out there. In this case, uh, this is again showing some of the intelligence and the tent services. It figured out the intent is you want to see your A1C. Well, it didn't find any A1C resources and observations, so, but it did find glucose. So it said it just estimated based upon all the glucose resources for that patient what your average A1C is running and presented it back. Uh, and likewise, since we're sitting here on A1C, I can actually update that so I can say my blood glucose 77, for example. And uh, now that actually is not only not looking up, but actually charted that back in and updated my, my A1C as I went on there. And if you go over here, you'll see that uh, the glucose just charted down here as well from the fire monitor. So that actually updated the fire server and went in as well. Um, it knows a lot of things about health. So you can say like my pulse is 88, for example, and it'll chart a pulse. Uh, so now it's recorded my pulse. And if I go back over here, you kind of get the idea that when it, re when it refreshes here, you'll see that pulse show up here at the end. There it is. So let's translate it into a heart rate resource and come over here. Um, the other things you can do are, again, to show some of the intelligence, like uh, um, you know, what is your care plan? Now this is the formal way of asking it, like what is my plan of care? And then this goes and aggregates you know, the care plan resource that's out there and kind of displays what the current care plan is for you uh, from, that's documented inside the fire server. But using that same intelligence, I can determine another intent. I can say, maybe I might not know what a plan of care is, but I might know what's going on. So I can say, what uh, symptoms would I be? So again, conversational. So again, this is, will point back to that same care plan resource because it knows at the bottom is things, there's a, you know, what I should be looking out for. So it's actually taken the natural language and figured out that, hey, this relates, to, the best way to answer this is the care plan resource that goes on there. And again, that's using our language understanding intelligence service. That's actually backed by our, um, that's backed by our cognitive services up there. Really cool stuff and it's open source. You can see how it works. You go in there, two, not enough time to go through it. Uh, another thing you do is maybe something not so PHI, -y, like uh, maybe they want to, interested in, you want to drive a, appointments or schedules to some of your physicians. You can say, show me doctors in Nashville, for example. And um, this will go out and use the practitioner resources inside of the server and come up with a with resource. And if they have attached to it websites, uh, again, like how to get to it. You know, first we have to bring up Bing Maps, of course, awesome map. <laughs> and, uh, uh, 
The other one is maybe scheduling. So maybe they provide, and again, these are URLs that are provided inside the practitioner resource to his website. And this goes to health grades because they use health grades to do online, online scheduling. That's out there as well. Um, and what's really happening behind the scenes is pretty cool. Not only updating the fire server, but we're actually landing this stuff, like I mentioned, in a data lake. And it's landed as raw fire. And uh, our analytics pick up on that. One of the workloads we have firing on that in our orchestration uh, using our uh, serverless functions and uh, logic apps is to pick that resource up. And when it lands for history in the fire server, we also pick that up and de-identify it. So we apply uh, safe harbor rules to the resource and then log that in a separate database. And we can make that database available for education and research and, and generic analytics that go on as well um, to go there. So that's another thing that's doing that's pretty sharp <laughs> behind it. And um, that's kind of it. I guess I'll be the guy to help you catch up today because <laughs> I didn't have much of that. And that's it. Hope you guys are. <laughs>